it's really great when new ideas gain traction. ASUS has been at the forefront of the dual screen laptop with offerings in both the ROG line and now the productivity forward ZenBook products. And in my hands is the latest example of that. One that I have had the immense pleasure of using over the last few weeks. Now, while it might not be the most powerful laptop for my personal use case scenarios, this laptop continues to make it clear. This is my favorite method of mobile computing. This is Joshua Vergara. What's going on, everybody? Here are my thoughts on the ASUS ZenBook Duo 14. Sponsored by Volta. Now, the obvious draw of this laptop is the fact that it carries two screens, making that dual monitor life something that you can bring with you. We'll get to the I.O. in a little bit, but notice how a dual screen laptop manages to be this thin, fitting in the same bags that are basically tailor-made for like MacBook Pro 13s. Opening the laptop makes the back bottom portion of the main monitor lift the chassis up a little bit, providing a tiny bit more angle for typing, for airflow, and for viewing the second screen and the second screen lifts up as well in the same movement, revealing a bit of separation between it and the set of fans that further help with cooling. Now, for anybody that hasn't used an ASUS Duo laptop before, it's really a sight to behold upon first use. Even a seasoned user like me, because I've been rocking last year's ASUS ROG Zephyrus Duo 15 as my main, still gets giddy over the unique experience that this laptop provides. Now, for a laptop that rocks a 14-inch screen, there are a couple of tropes that are common for smaller notebooks. The screen is a 1080p IPS touchscreen that tops out at 400 nits. Colors are rendered well, and the screen gets just bright enough to be used in most situations. While a higher resolution might have been great, especially for media, I haven't felt too cramped for space once I made the scaling 100%. That's down from the peculiar default of 150%. And despite the resolution being lower than pretty much any of my other computer displays, I don't feel the need for more space on the main screen because I have the second screen. And that would be the ScreenPad Plus, a 12.65 inch touchscreen that hits a 1920 by 515 resolution, a uniquely acute aspect ratio. As I mentioned before, it does lift up a little bit to make viewing it a little bit easier, but more angle on it actually would have been a bit appreciated. At the very least, maybe being able to pull it up more myself would be great, but then it would still lower all the way back down accordingly when closing the lid. So taken on the spec sheet, these might not be the most powerful displays, but it's the sum of the Duo 14's parts that make up an experience that is really hard not to have fun with. It's obvious who benefits the most from this kind of setup, multitaskers. The most common setup for me on the Duo 14 is to have my script writing or email responding on the main screen, and on the second screen, it's either messengers like Telegram or media like YouTube or both. Now, as a productivity forward laptop, I can definitely see people taking up similar workflows like this that are mostly text forward. Reference materials below, main work up top. Buttons above the touchpad let you quickly switch the currently used windows, or you can just hide or turn off the screen pad entirely if you don't need it. One quick thing though, while both of the screens are stylus compatible, I don't have any of ASUS's pen products, so I can't really speak to that kind of workflow that artists or graphic workers would do. That's why I didn't do a who is this for segment for this laptop, because I simply wouldn't be able to embody certain users that could benefit from this laptop's capabilities. But don't get me wrong, those people could definitely benefit from this. The ScreenPad Plus just helps make the dual screen life a bit easier to manage thanks to an overlay that gives you a few different options. You can change the ScreenPad brightness, bring up dedicated app launchers that can open groups of apps already sprawled properly across the two displays, and there's even a button for locking the keyboard if all you're trying to do is view some stuff. Bear in mind that taps on the dock snap the mouse cursor to that spot because these two screens are treated like two separate monitors in the Windows backend. The innate Windows software settings are still at work even with ASUS's added layers. For example, if you're trying to click and drag a window to the shortcuts for sending it to the other monitor or for expanding it across the two displays, the little bit of wiggle of the window around those two choices could make Windows minimize all of your other windows. So it's not really ASUS changing up the fundamentals of Windows, they're just adding more into the mix with their own software and features. You can see that further in the MyASUS program, which gives you more features to toggle. Uh, you can get color tweaks for the two displays, you can change up the battery settings, set internet priorities, and even mess with settings for the speakers and the microphones. Speaking of which, here's a look at the webcam and you can hear the quality of the microphones right now, in case you're gonna be doing all of those Zoom meetings, but you have the ScreenPad Plus to do other stuff, like watching anime during a meeting. Actually, that's a true story. I've watched anime on here as I try to catch up on Attack on Titan with the built-in speakers that are tuned by Harman Kardon. They're actually plenty loud, especially for a 14-inch laptop, and they have a surprising amount of richness. <laughs> I 
I do think they benefit a little bit from the extra resonance chambers because the speakers also blare out from below the screen pad's lifted angle. Of course, headphones are still an option with the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack on the right side, pulling double time for headsets. Flanking that port is a micro SD card slot, something that I've used to get photos off of my camera and then edit them in Adobe Lightroom. And then there is a full-sized USB port. The other side of the laptop actually has a full HDMI port if you want to get yet another screen into your flow. And then finally, you have two USB-C ports that also work as Thunderbolt ports and power delivery charging ports with the included 65 watt charger or compatible alternatives. And when you get a compatible charging solution, why not make it more convenient with a cable by the sponsor of this video, Volta, and their Volta Spark Universal Cable. Volta makes cables with magnets on one end that make plugging devices like the Zenbook Duo 14 in super easy. Simply put the USB-C end of the spark into your charging brick or power bank, leave the removable USB-C tip in your device, and let the magnet do the rest. The spark is capable of high wattage power delivery charging and data transfer, making it a cable that can be used in all possible scenarios for a laptop like this. And if you happen to pull or snag the cable, it's not going to take the entire product with it. Volta Spark and other cable solutions minimize the clutter caused by wire overload. So hit the link in the description to try out some for yourself. Thanks again to Volta for sponsoring this video. Speaking of battery life, that's another lovely part of this laptop's capabilities. While my usage was primarily text editing and light photo editing, putting the MyAsu setting at balanced and going down to 2 out of 4 on the Windows Power Option slider gets me over 5 hours of straight usage with the screen brightness on both screens at max. I actually find that really impressive considering I just couldn't bring myself to lower the brightness on either of the screens, but plenty of other tests that you can find on the internet brought the screen brightness down to like 30% and easily managed up to around 10 hours for web browsing and media streaming, which is in line with this sticker down here that you can see, the Intel Evo certification. I knew what to expect and how to get the most out of this laptop because of this little sticker, which is Intel's way of signing off on key factors that would make new laptops like this effective. The Intel Evo certification, among other things, prioritizes usage of the new 11th gen Intel laptop processors. My Duo 14 in particular rocks the i7-1165G7. The certification also requires laptops to wake instantly from sleep. It also posits that these laptops have at least 9 or more hours in battery life when the screen is full HD resolution, and it requires fast charging that gives back much of that power after a short time of being plugged in. All of these things are satisfied in a laptop that goes above and beyond by putting the ScreenPad Plus on here, which is really impressive and adds to this laptop's massive appeal. But I do have to be honest here, as exciting as this might all be, it's still not a laptop that I would just recommend to anyone and everyone. It's an obvious thing to say that for an ASUS laptop that doesn't bear the ROG name, all but the most casual gamers will want to steer clear. And without higher powered graphics, my video editing workflow took a performance hit, but I can see some people getting casual and simple cuts done here and there, like for social media. Now there is a model of this that has the NVIDIA MX450 dedicated GPU, but I imagine the gains you get on what is still considered a lightweight graphics package won't push this laptop very far into the upper echelons. You could always outfit a kit that includes an external GPU connected via the Thunderbolt ports, but that will obviously require putting more money down and it's obviously not going to be as portable as the laptop is itself. Indeed, this laptop is more tailor-made for people who range between the casual browser and the multitasking productivity nut. But even those people might find the barrier of entry a little higher than expected. The keyboard, for example, while properly backlit and actually really satisfying to clickety-clack, is pushed far down on the chassis because it has to make way for the ScreenPad Plus. That eliminates any wrist resting on the bottom of more conventional laptops. That also means that the touchpad is moved to the side, which I have already seen annoys some users. I got kind of used to it because it's more less in the position that I'd have an external mouse, but then again I would just connect an external mouse. All of this on top of the fact that I'm not really a big touchscreen user anyway. Overall, the Intel Evo certification makes clear that the casual laptop user looking to double up on their portable screens will get really reliable and really snappy performance on this. For people looking for more graphically capable power, the XE Graphics ensures that you can get smaller tasks done, just don't get your hopes up that Intel's version of integrated graphics can withstand heavy GPU-based workloads yet. But the ZenBook 14 has made it very clear to me that this is indeed my favorite way of mobile computing. I'm really lucky to have a Zephyrus Duo 15, so I've enjoyed this level of multitasking and enjoyment already. But to feel it in a small body design that can go with me anywhere brings me closer to a dream of having a 14-inch dual-screen laptop with the power I need to make videos like what you're watching right now.
And this laptop continues the sentiment that I can't stress enough then about how I'm loving what Asus has been doing these last couple of years. As you know, I'm already a fan of the flippy camera Zenfone smartphones, the ROG phone always makes waves, and the ROG dual screen laptops became a proof of concept that birthed the productivity spin-offs like the Zenbook Duo line. All I can really say then is, keep it going Asus, and if we can push the envelope even more in terms of performance for power users like myself, whether that be through Intel's own advancements or by injecting some extra graphics power yourself, then I think we'll have some real winners on our laps no matter where we go. The Asus ZenBook Duo 14 in the configuration I used for this review can actually be found for under $1500 depending on where you look, but it seems no matter where you look right now, it is currently back ordered. Good luck getting one if this unique yet nimble laptop speaks to you. For more on products like the ZenBook Duo 14 and more, subscribe to my channel. Let me know your thoughts in the comments and drop some likes on this video. With all of that said though, I'm gonna go ahead and call it on this one. Thank you so much for watching. Please take care of yourselves and each other and enjoy your tea everybody.